Hey everyone, Chris Urso here with Earth Capital Partners. Uh, following up on our monthly project spotlight, this is something uh, that we started back in January that we thought was kind of fun uh, to share with our investor base and for those looking to invest with us. And also allows us to kind of go back and look at some of the projects we've completed over the last you know 14 years now. So this month we are talking about the flats at East Atlanta. So one of our most... Uh, interesting projects that we've done since inception. Uh, this particular project was acquired back in March of 2017. So it was a vacant 140 unit property uh, built in the 1960s, 70s in East Atlanta, Georgia. So about 10, 15 minutes from Midtown, uh, right off of Main Highway, Good proximity, totally gentrifying area that's that was getting, you know, kind of new restaurants, coffee shops, um, older, rougher neighborhood, but was starting to transition. And we had gotten a call from one of our closest relationships uh, in the business on the broker side on, hey, this is right up your alley. You know, we think you can get a great basis. The owner is a local investor, uh, very successful. He also owns a general contracting business. And he'd be willing to do the work uh, at a fixed cost construction. So basically we buy the property, his crew does the work, we agree on the scope of work, the budget, et cetera, and his team performs the work. And he was willing to put escrows up and contingencies and backstops on, on the work as well. Now the property sounds really easy in theory. Um, at the time, it was our largest renovation. So we had progressively been growing our renovation programs uh, you know, each project we had done back starting in uh, 2009 with our first apartment deal, which ironically was a vacant 40 unit building. Uh, but that budget was only a couple hundred thousand dollars. This was now going to be, you know, about a six million dollar budget on the renovation. So our thesis here, after we did our diligence, uh, checked out the location, there was two other deals that were proven in the submarket. There were 70s deals that were renovated didn't have as good of floor plans. One of the things that was really attractive here was the size of the floor plans. Two bedrooms were 11, 1200 square feet. One bedrooms were between eight and 900 square feet. And the three bedroom, two bath was almost 1500 square feet. So they were flats, but these were really big floor plans. Basically stuff you wouldn't be able to build today because it just doesn't make sense uh, from the economic side. So that was one of the really attractive things for us. Uh, and getting to know the seller and the owner who was very, very successful, very wealthy. Uh, he had tremendous political clout uh, in the county and the city. So that was important for us because the property had several, several violations. I wanna say this one probably had almost a hundred violations. And the work that we were doing was extensive. This was not a rehab, this was a full on redevelopment. So all new plumbing, mechanicals, HVAC, upgrades to electric, uh, new infrastructure in the parking, waistlines as needed, all new roofs, all new windows. So it was a major, major redevelopment. Uh, so we really took our time getting to know the seller, got really comfortable with the structure. Uh, you know, our brokers vouched for him, several other brokers that had done business with him, gave him glowing recommendations. And really just a great feeling from him after meeting with his team for several months that they were just good guys, you know, like us that are going to do what they say they're going to do. There's going to be issues. There's going to be challenges in every project, but you really want to make sure that you got a good team that's there to support you. So ultimately we closed on the property in March of uh, 2017. Part of the uh, stipulation was that the property needed to be fully vacant. So it was about, you know, 20% occupied when we went under contract and the seller agreed to deliver it vacant. We didn't want to deal with evictions or anything like that. We wanted to be able to hit the ground running and just go straight up from there. Uh, so we developed a really detailed scope and schedule. We hired um, Buckhaven as our construction manager, owner's rep on this, because they're based out of Atlanta, just as an extra bit of oversight because it was our biggest project uh, to date at the time. And started the project because it, it was called Little Baghdad. Uh, that's kind of the nickname we gave it when we bought it. Cause literally I would drive through the parking lot and it would be like craters, uh, in the parking lot from, you know, bombs going off in there. Literally the car would go down up. It could only go like five miles an hour and, you know, 
buildings were boarded up, parking lot was destroyed, uh, units were gutted in some instances due to water damage. So this was a massive, massive undertaking, but we really saw a great opportunity in the path of progress. And most importantly, the ability to essentially build a B deal at a basis of, you know, sub $90,000 a unit for the largest floor plans in the submarket. So that's really what attracted us to the deal. So we got into the deal. Um, you know, our construction partner was great through the process. We really attacked the outside hard, um, windows, roof, exterior paint, uh, cleaning up the landscaping, topography, drainage. And then the way it laid out, we were able to design a plan where we would get the main building that was going to have our office and then do a building at a time uh, throughout the course of the property. I want to say there was probably either, uh, I believe there was 14 buildings of 10 units a piece. And we developed a game plan to, to attack and CO and inspect on a per building basis. So code enforcement would come in, the city would come in, inspect HVAC and inspect plumbing, electrical, give us the green light to close the walls and then come in and do a final CFC, what's called certificate of completion uh, or compliance for that unit. Certificate of compliance is code enforcement. So um, I know I'm giving you a lot here, but this was a, a really interesting and exciting project for us. And we began leasing about six months into the project. Uh, we put together a great on-site management team, really rebranded, well, branded the property well, marketed it well, and started pulling in you know, really great tenants. Uh, at the end of the day, our, our lease up really went extremely well. But before I get to the results on that side, construction did not come without its challenges. Um, you know, this was a project for those of you that were invested in it with us. I think you'll probably remember I was down there, you know, personally almost every week or every other week for the life of construction on the phone daily. Because on a job like this, when you're redeveloping 60s, 70s vintage property, there's going to be issues. You can't possibly rebuild every single thing on the property. It just wouldn't make economic sense. But we really put the time and energy to be thoughtful and then attack the, the issues as they came. And one of the biggest issues on this uh, was the hand railings. So they were all metal hand railings throughout the property. And this was built back in the 70s. Given the extent of the renovation that we were doing, the city came in and said, hey, these railings are not grandfathered in. And this is something that we didn't expect, the seller did not expect. Uh, our lender, none of us, when we were doing our renovation budget. And we had to do a wholesale replacement of all the railings on the property, which came with basically a, close to a million dollar cost. So almost, uh, I want to say it was between 800 and a million dollars of a cost overrun, you know, midstream on the project that nobody could have expected or planned for. We were told originally that there's no problems. You know, we're grandfathered in, we don't have to replace them. And then one inspector comes in and this happens on every job. And that's why it's important to plan from the onset. So that was a, probably the biggest obstacle. The other ones were the normal, you know, building by building. Hey, we have to replace some waistline that we didn't anticipate because the backups are happening. You know, that stuff is manageable. We build in healthy contingencies to absorb that. But a million dollar budget hit on, you know, basically a five and a half million dollar renovation is a big deal. Um, so how do we manage that? I think it's important to understand on the front end, you know, how we finance this project. So we finance this with a lender that we had used in the past uh, for our heavy renovation projects. They're a bridge lender. They were a debt fund. So, you know, we can't go get traditional fixed rate financing on these projects because there's no cash flow. It's basically a construction project. So we go out to our bridge lenders, lay out our business plan, our thesis, show them the market, the comps, tour the property with them, give them our vision, work through the budget that we've got from our contractors, and then they will basically lend us on cost of purchase price plus renovation. So our lender, we had, we had successfully completed two projects with this lender prior to that were heavy renovation reposition jobs. So we've built a good relationship and good level of trust. And... I'll never forget, they wanted to, we were buying the property for five and a half million dollars. Uh, and I believe we had about a five and a half million dollar renovation budget. So call it just around $11 million. And they were at the time willing to finance us at 80% of cost. And I went because the economics made so much sense, right? 
So meaning they were so comfortable doing 80% of cost because they felt that their completed loan to value was going to be in the 60% range, mid 60s range, because of all the value we were creating, the rents that we were going to generate on the property. We opted to top out at no more than 70% of cost. Uh, we weren't comfortable with taking on you know, that level of leverage. Now, we had an issue on the railings that we could not absorb in our budget on this one. So I think it's important to understand how we finance this is a direct result of how we solve this. Because we tend to be a little more cautious and bring more equity to deals on the front end versus higher leverage, we had the ability to go back to our lender and discuss the issue with them and say, hey, listen, we've done all the diligence we can do. We've got our costs here. This is something that came out of left field from the city. You know, I'm a little nervous. Do I need to raise equity on this thing? And he said, Chris, relax. You guys are doing everything that you said you were going to do. You didn't come in and max out your leverage on the front end. We'll increase your proceeds by $900,000 that you have available to draw upon as you need it. Because everything is is happening exactly how you set forth and you didn't over leverage the project from the onset. So that was a huge relief for me. Uh, so that was a big relief, obviously. Um, some of you might notice that we're on part two of the video, changing the backdrop, I'm at the office now. Uh, but that was a huge relief um, knowing that number one, we had the right partner. Number two, we didn't over leverage the deal going into it. Um, you know, and I think that's super important when it comes to development and renovation or redevelopment. You know, for us, I think that's been a, you know, a big saving grace is that we're willing to sacrifice a little bit of the upfront, you know, return projections on paper uh, to bring some more equity or, and, you know, obviously, and as it directly correlates, do a little bit less leverage. Um, it allows us flexibility if and when there are going to be, you know, an issue or a challenge in a deal. So, uh, so basically within, uh, we started leasing within the first six months and the net result all was a fantastic outcome. So we continued the lease up while we were under construction. So we had a very methodical plan, the way the site laid out, uh, for construction to continue to push back. So we had the front half of the property was fully done and functional. Uh, we were able to start moving residents in, start generating cash flow. Uh, our rents exceeded our pro forma rents by more than 15% uh, of our projections. And we were able to lease up the property and fully stabilize it within 18 months of taking ownership. So that's completing a $6 million renovation, lease up, get to stabilization, and ultimately sold the property literally in March of 2019, 24 months from the month that we bought it. Uh, so it was a tremendous success for us. We were all into the property for just about $12 million. We sold it for uh, 16.4, I believe. Uh, I think it's in the update. So it was a great return. We netted a, just about a 2X multiple on the deal level equity and over a 40% internal rate of return. But I think the other really exciting thing for this project, with it being a monumental undertaking to complete and execute uh, and in Atlanta, uh, which at the time, this was our first deal in Atlanta as well. So uh, it's really all about picking the right people uh, to partner with on projects like this. And when I say partner, we look at our general contractors as partners at the end of the day, because that's what they are. Uh, our success, you know, really has a lot to do with their ability to execute their plan and live up to the expectations that we have uh, on our timelines, our budgets, uh, and our finish levels. So I think that's really important. A couple other takeaways, you know, was on the leverage side, which we've discussed, not to over leverage our deals. I think that's really important uh, and have good relationships with our lenders uh, that we use for these projects. I think that's very, very important. And then, you know, really knowing the market and understanding and not being overly aggressive with our assumptions on the lease up and rents that could be achieved. So a couple of questions that we, we received in terms of, you know, why did we sell the deal? Uh, for us, it was a little bit, if you remember 2019 and the 2018 
rates started increasing. The 10 year was pretty much where it is today and everybody's freaking out today, but how quickly we forget. The 10 year was hovering around three and a quarter, 350 financing was getting a little bit wacky. Uh, you know, we felt the market might've been, you know, tightening up a little bit and potentially a recession, you know, was, was on, you know, on the horizon, there was talks of that. And we felt that while the property really outperformed on its rents, we weren't quite confident enough that the demographics were there to support and sustain the property. Um, if there was going to be a recession, meaning the strength of the tenant base, we felt that they were stretching a little bit while they were qualified for our rents, obviously, uh, based on all of our income and background checks. We weren't quite sure that they would have been able to sustain if there was a little hiccup in the economy uh, at the rent levels that they were at. Now, I was completely proven wrong. Our buyers absolutely love the deal and they've done extremely well. Rents are probably up much like everywhere else, another 20% since we've sold that deal. Um, they are building another phase to that project as well. But, you know, we are never going to look backwards and say, I wish we wouldn't have sold when we generated a, you know, 100% return on equity in 24 months. Uh, and more importantly, we took that equity that was in a very risky deal that we executed very well on and transferred that via a 1031 exchange. So transferred, deferred the gains uh, into a property that we still own today called Latitude Richmond Hill. So we bought that in uh, July of 2019 as a uh, brand new property uh, that was built in three phases. So 2006, 2016, and 2019, with the majority of the 192 units, 160 of them built between 2018 and 19. But it was a B plus type property in Savannah, Georgia, a market that we had a presence in, suburban Savannah, great school district. So on that particular deal, we didn't have a ton of investors in flats at East Atlanta. We had one large investor that was in a 1031, and then we had our group of investors that came together. So we decided to do a 1031 exchange into Latitude Richmond Hill, which was a high quality, brand new construction, essentially uh, in a great submarket within Savannah. And that basically allowed us to protect and preserve the gains that we realized on flats at East Atlanta. And that property, uh, we refinanced it, returned about 30% of the equity in uh, February of 2020. And it's been producing 12 to 14 percent cash yields. It's 99 percent leased. We've seen consistent rent growth, and we put fixed rate financing on it back in 20 early 2020. That our plan will be to continue to hold and operate that asset and generate good consistent quarterly distributions for our investors on that deal. Uh, so gave you a lot on this one from the redevelopment to some construction issues to our lender uh, to Atlanta. You know, I personally. Atlanta is not a market of focus for us today. Um, you know, our focus right now, so I'll kind of translate this into where we are today in the world, uh, which, you know, literally every day it's changing. So by the time you see this, there could be some, some sort of major headline that comes up. Uh, but I think it's April 3rd right now when I'm doing this. So, uh, you know, our focus going forward, as you, you're probably aware, we have a ground up development project that we're getting ready to start in Asheville, North Carolina. In the next 30 days uh we've actually this is the first that we're announcing it but we've closed out our equity we we're able to get uh, a modified price reduction in our overall cost with our contractors and landowner um, so we were able to reduce the basis by about two and a quarter million dollars they were very understanding of the environment that we're in and the challenges we've been facing in the capital markets and the debt side of things uh, and this is a good partner. They've proven to be a great partner through the process, our GC partner on this project uh, to part of the Prospect Real Estate Group, so BCC Construction. We've been really, really happy with them thus far. And we had a, we had a very candid conversation last week that, you know, our leverage is coming in significantly lower. Uh, rates have moved up since this process started back in July. And they were understanding and asked what we needed to kind of you know, feel good and, and get this to a place where we can close out the equity and move forward. And they agreed to a two and a quarter million dollar discount uh, on overall cost of construction. So really happy with that. So we're officially closed out on the equity. 
uh, by the time this goes out, and we're thrilled about that. And our lender has given us the nod. I believe they're going into executive committee today uh, that the appraisal came back super strong. And, you know, our focus on the development side is going to be Asheville for the next, you know, at least three to six months. We are going to continue to look for very unique development opportunities on a one-off basis, ideally with our same partner that we're using on Asheville, our GC partner. Uh, they have a land development and acquisition arm, but they don't want to be the developer operator. So we're in constant talks with them about other projects that they're working on. Uh, you know, and when we see something that makes sense, uh, we will move forward on that because we view development as part of our long-term strategy for wealth building, high-grade institutional asset part of our portfolio. But on the other side of our business, we've intentionally scaled down and sold nine assets in our kind of workforce value add side of our business over the last two and a half years. And our goal is to reload. Uh, our goal is to acquire 2,000 units of existing assets over the next 12 to 24 months and rebuild our workforce portfolio in the markets that we currently have a footprint in uh, or have had, a, have had a footprint in in the past. So that's really Charleston, Savannah, Greenville, Charlotte, uh, Middle Tennessee, and uh, the the triangle, basically Raleigh, uh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. So really the Carolinas, Savannah, Georgia, and Middle Tennessee is where we're going to continue to focus to rebuild that portfolio. So, you know, for us, for the next three to five years, our business will, will you know, consist of adding to our new development portfolio on a very, very particular, specific, one-off basis. Ideally, you know, we can find the right project, one per year, that we can add new development and continue to build that portfolio out for the next five to 10 plus years in terms of holding those assets and then build our value add portfolio back up with existing assets that have the ability to get to cash flow and create value uh, in a meaningful way in a much shorter period of time of development and look to hold and operate those assets on anywhere from a three to five or five to seven year horizon. So that's where we're at. You know, we're starting to see and hear very, very early signs of, you know, uh, I don't, distress is an overstatement, but uh, I'm going to call it urgency is probably a better word of sellers. Uh, we expect a lot of inventory to hit the market the second half of this year. There was a lot of deals done between 2021 and first half of 2022 that were originated on floating rate, short-term floating rate debt, uh, meaning two-year money where their interest basically floats every month on a SOFR based product. So SOFR was 30 basis points back in you know January, February of 2021. It's now 4.6%. So if your spread over SOFR is 300 basis points, your rate was 330 in January of 2021. That rate come December of 2022, of 23, excuse me, is going to be as high as 8%. So those guys are going to have to refinance now in a very different environment from when they bought the deal. And if they didn't execute their business plan and grow their rents fast enough and far enough to be able to grow into a refinance, they're going to be stuck in a situation where they're going to have to do what's called a cash in refinance. And that's where the only way that they're going to be able to refinance into fixed rate debt is if they bring money to the table to reduce and pay off some of their existing loan. So I'm going to do more on that in a separate update. Uh, in terms of where we're seeing opportunity, but we're starting to get calls. We're building our pipeline. Chris Gorman's going to Savannah tomorrow to go tour three properties, uh, one of which we've been tracking since now January, uh, and they haven't been able to turn the turn the corner on their operations on this deal. But it's only six miles from our Latitude Richmond Hill deal. Uh, it's a fairly newer product built in the 2000s. But that's an opportunity that we're tracking closely along with a couple of others. We have a very deep value add in Charlotte, owned by the same group for over 40 years. It's a 1970s product, mostly all original. Uh, that's a major value add in probably one of the best locations that I've seen in 14 years in terms of home values, retail, proximity to, to some of the best neighborhoods in you know Charlotte, the South End area. So that's a deal that we're we're working on very intensely and will be offering on, but at the right at our basis. So our our plan is not to stretch. 
We're going to underwrite deals in markets that we want to own and be in for the next five to 10 years at a price point where we feel it's worth it for us to take on the, the potential risk of that deal um, and get paid for that you know, as we execute our business plan. And if we can't hit it, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll say, great, thank you. And we'll track that deal and see if it actually closes. And if not, we'll be prepared to resubmit. That's how we bought some of our best deals, you know, 10 plus years ago was, you know, getting in, you know, getting intensely, uh, involved in, in the offer process and underwriting and diligence on deals that we would have loved to own and then making an offer at a price that made sense for us and then hanging around the hoop to see if the deal actually closes. And if it didn't close, we, we were there ready at our number to step in and close the deal. And that's how we got some of our best deals in the past. So we're gonna ramp that back up, go back to our playbook from 2010 you know, to 2015 and, uh, and continue to build our pipeline out and track deals that we'd love to own at the right price and be patient. So we're not in a rush. Many of, you know, we get the question all the time, when's our next deal? Where's it gonna be? How many deals are we gonna do? They could be in the next three months. It could be in the next six months. Uh, we could do one deal between now and the end of the year. We could do, you know, five deals in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, so we're just staying very, very close to the market right now. And we'll keep you updated as opportunities present themselves. But our overall goal is basically 2,000 units, which is consistent with, um, you know, deal volume that we've done in the past. You know, we do anywhere from three to five deals every 12 to 18 months. And those deals range from, you know, 200 to 250 units per deal. So very consistent with our volume uh, that we've done in the past. So I appreciate you listening to this. I know this was a long one, but Flats at East Atlanta, Property Profile, a.k.a. Little Baghdad. Um, one of our most exciting and rewarding projects also to take a very highly distressed property within a community and turn it into something that is fully functional, safe, uh, you know, for basically blue, gray collar housing. So I encourage you to check it out online. If you haven't, you can go in and Google the flats at East Atlanta. We'll put a link in and you'll see the guys uh, who bought the deal from us are operating it. But everything you see from a finished perspective there is what we did in just two years from start to finish. So thanks for checking it out. Take care.